Why is it better to sell items on eBay versus using local buying and selling services like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, LetGo, or OfferUp? Well, let me show you. Okay, most of the benefits of using eBay have to do with reducing the number of interactions between you and the buyer, which saves you both tons of time and allows you to create a steady rhythm with your sales system that you can't get by using a local buying selling app. The other major benefit revolves around eBay's built-in global audience. This fact alone that you have access to billions of buyers around the world shows us how powerful eBay can be compared to selling locally, where your reach is limited to a 10 or 20 mile radius? Those are just the broad benefits. Let's get a little more in depth and look at the specific differences between eBay and local apps at each step of the sales process. We'll start with item selection, then listing, then bargaining, and finally, what happens after the sale. All right, starting with item selection. When you decide to post an item on, let's say, Facebook Marketplace, how do you know if this item will sell or not? You don't. All you can do is post it and hope for the best. Wouldn't it be nice to go through that pile of stuff you have, pick out an item, and know how hungry people are to get their hands on it? Yeah. Well, there is a way on eBay to figure this out. You basically can predict how hot an item will be, and if there's enough profit in the item to be worth your time to do the remaining steps. So, there's obviously a financial benefit. But think about the time-saving benefits. Before you even decide to post that item for sale, you'll know if people are buying it or if that item is better off in the donate bin. It's like the nut sorting room in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where squirrels test the nuts to see if they're good or bad. If they're good, then they go into Wonka bars. If they're bad, they get thrown into a garbage chute. Later in this video, I'm going to teach you to be like one of those squirrels. I'm going to share a high value sourcing technique so you can test the profitability and demand for any item. I'm also going to give you a worksheet that walks you step by step through this technique. More on that later. Let's get to the next step, listing your items. I don't want to get too deep with this, mainly because each of the platforms I've sampled have a pretty good user interface for listing items. With most local buying selling apps, you can use your phone to snap photos, enter a description, price, and post. I will say that I love how eBay allows you to find the exact item you're selling and pre-populate your listing with a title and category. From there, you can add your own photos, price it, description, etc. Okay, moving on to bargaining. This is one of the biggest difference between local buying selling apps and eBay. Selling locally, you are at the mercy of your buyers. It's a lot like running a garage sale. Hardly ever will you end up getting a fair price. Let me explain. On buying selling sites, the first question buyers will ask you, is this item still available? You'll say yes. Then the second question is, will you accept less? Mm. This doesn't happen on eBay. You set the price and it is what it is. And even though eBay does give the option to accept offers, you still have way more leverage, especially if you know your item is selling well. Why? Because you're not limited to selling to locals within a few miles of your home. eBay buyers come from all over the world. So buyers know that if they don't act, someone else might buy your product first. Now what about the distractions of selling locally? You have multiple prospects messaging you throughout the day. Some of them are serious buyers, but there's always a handful of people who are just browsing around. Again, this kind of dickering doesn't happen on eBay. I probably get one message on eBay for every 20 products that I sell. So if you're a shy, introverted person, you can find comfort in knowing that you can sell to people on eBay without ever having to talk to them or meet them. Which brings me to the next section. What happens after the sale? Here is another area where eBay reigns supreme versus those local apps. If you weren't burnt out on the notifications from prospects when making the sale, now you have to schedule a good time to meet with the person who's buying the item. So there's more back and forth, then setting aside a time to meet up, and if they don't show up, you have to do it all over again with another prospective buyer. With eBay, every item is delivered through the mail to your buyer. You can schedule a local pickup, but I've never used this because my buyers are usually too far away. So you'll never have to worry about buyers bailing out. They have to pay before you'll send them the product. You'll never have to worry about meeting up with creepy people. You can sell from the safety of your own home. You don't have to worry about hundreds of notifications. Just this one. 
Remember earlier when I said I'd teach you to be like one of Willy Wonka's squirrels so you can go through your pile of items and test which products are good to sell and which are not? Well, there's a name that eBay resellers give to this process. It's called sourcing. There's a lot of good nuts out there for us, but there are a lot of bad nuts too. So with the help of this sourcing worksheet, we'll make sure every item passes two tests, the hunger test and the profitability test. The hunger test tells me how hungry people are for the item. I can figure this out by looking on eBay at the sales history of other items like mine and answer these two questions. One, how many of these have sold in the past? And two, how often are people buying them? As you can see, the sourcing worksheet has a built-in scoring system to help give me a sense of how high the demand is for this item. Next, we have the profitability test. For every item I sell on eBay, I have to pay the appropriate fees and shipping costs. Eventually, I'll have to calculate these costs, but all I need now is a single number I call the bottom dollar. Basically, this is the minimum profit I'll accept for each item, plus approximate fees. For those starting out, I suggest a bottom dollar amount of $6. That's $5 profit, but it leaves us a little bit extra for the fees, which are somewhere around 13%. Now that I have my bottom dollar, I'll go back to eBay and answer two more questions. Are these items selling for more or less than my bottom dollar? And who's paying for shipping? the buyers or the sellers. Again, using the scoring system, we can be sure that for each item, more money is coming in than is going out and decide once and for all if our item is a good nut or bad nut. Now it's your turn to take what you've learned here and start sourcing your own items. You can find a link in the description to get your squirrely hands on the sourcing worksheet. If you wanna watch a video of me playing good nut, bad nut with actual items, there's a link in there for that too. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If so, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Happy sourcing.